had virtually guaranteed the league leaders another three points. So a victory required for Rangers to stay just five points off top spot. But United looking in a run of four successive defeats. David has the best of the action from Ibrox. Rangers were forced into a late change with Nacho Novo promoted to the starting lineup in place of Peter Lovenkrantz. Jason Scotland was missing for United and the fit again Paul Ritchie was given a place on the bench. The prospect of a visit to Ibrox in the back of losing 10 goals in three games must have been daunting for United. And as early as the second minute, the signs were that the nightmare could continue. Dado Perzo's header should have found the net. Against the defensive 4 5 1 lineup, Rangers took every opportunity to attack the visitors. But all too soon, old feelings were apparent. No early goal and signs of recent confidence draining. There was certainly a lack of clear cut chances until just before the break. Again, Perzo on the end of the move, and again, United survived. So, not much to cheer about in the first half for the Rangers supporters, although Novo was always busy. This is the kind of form that tempted Rangers to take him from Dundee. He found Paul Jarvie in no mood to be beaten, while Perzo was having one of those days in front of goal. The Rangers supporters had expected a landslide, and given their side's defensive record that was running to seven games without conceding, even one might have been enough for the points. Boom Song's tackle on Barry Robson deemed fair, then more frustration from Novo on the home side as his tempting cross found no takers. Stephen Thompson inches away from connecting, and a yellow card for Robson for a dive. All sins forgiven in 69 minutes, however, as Novo justified his inclusion from the start. A wonderful piece of play, finished by a splendid strike to lift the gloom and ease the frustration. A tasty treat from Nacho, his third goal in four games, and he's proving to be more than useful. However, the best chance of any floodgates opening here would have come from the October weather, and as they huffed and puffed, Rangers couldn't blow United's house down, and they were to be rocked to the foundations themselves before the end. This was a competent display from United, who rarely threatened, although there was a warning sign to Rangers that a one-goal lead can never be taken for granted. That lesson came home to roost, although Perzo felt his challenge on Karim Kerka was all right, Steve Conroy thought otherwise. Soft perhaps, but contact was made, and Barry Robson, who used to polish Paul Gascoigne's boots, rammed home a personal message to the club that let him go. From helping out the man now known as G8, Robson sent the Rangers fans heading for the M8. A late penalty claim cut no ice with the referee, who infuriated the home fans by waving aside the appeals after Thompson was bundled. It actually looked more of a foul than the challenge on Kerker. In the final analysis, Rangers not ruthless enough, and on the day, stubborn determination overcame stuttering domination. It's hard enough as it is, five points behind. Uh, now we have it all to do again, and... You know, get back in the, the winning trail, starting to do and during the week. But I need more urgency in it from the players, and we need, you know, that more, more of that desire to win the games and throughout the team. You came here to play with just one up, James Grady, but people supporting from the midfield when you got the ball. Well, the, the, we tried to play with three up and try to put their full backs back, but, but Rain, Glasgow Rangers, Glasgow Celtic, you know, they pushed them back, and it became almost four, five, one at times. Um, but they defended very well, better than they have done after an initial five, ten minute period when it was quite sticky defended well and, uh, and we got the result we wanted. Celtic increased the lead at the top of the Bank of Scotland Premier League to seven points and despite earning good points, Dundee United and Inverness still fill the bottom two places. As David said there, Andy, for all Rangers' good run of form in recent weeks, they've now suddenly slipped seven points off the pace. Yeah, it's a big gap even at this stage of the season. I know there's still so many points to play for, but you hear Alec there talking about desire and hunger, but... For me, Rangers just lack a bit of invention, especially from the middle of the park. The best player yesterday looked as though it was Nacho Novo playing uh, that unfamiliar role on the left-hand side. But he looked very dangerous and scored a great goal. Yeah, you wondered, Andy, if this was going to be the first goal. He's got his shot in, but the keeper's done well eventually. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's working hard, Novo. He's playing in all sorts of positions for the benefit of the team. I think he's obviously much better through the middle, as his goal demonstrated. But 
He's played wide in the right, he's played wide in the left. But you see here when he's through the middle, Jim, how dangerous he can be. Takes it, one touch on a turn, and that's just a terrific finish. We should also point out Mark Wilson gave the ball away there, which led to Vignal's run forward. Novo turns inside, and it's a great finish. Yeah, he did, but Novo's got so much to do, so a lot of credit goes to him for creating it himself. And you can't ask for a better finish than that. And Hugh, I don't think anybody expected Dundee United, on the basis of their recent run of form, to come to Ibrox and take anything at all. That may have included Ian McCall. You know, they'd lost 14 goals in their previous four games. Then they go a goal down to Nacho and Novo. You're entitled to think it's all over. So all credit to Ian McCall's team and to Barry Robson in particular for proving that was not the case. Yeah, I was there, Andy, and just uh, as the game went on, you just had a feeling something was going to give. Rangers give away the free kick, and it's a fantastic finish from Barry Robson. Yeah, it is, but uh, unlike Celtic, Rangers aren't ruthless. It's always going to be uh, very nervy when you're just a goal in front and you're maybe missing one or two chances. To be honest, I felt it was a free kick, but uh, there is the, the best free kick that I've seen so far. Absolutely beautiful into that top corner, and... It's a wonderful strike from Barry Robson. Yeah, it was a real contender for Player of the Week. We're going to find out what that was later. Now, Rangers thought Kerkar was quite cute when winning that free kick, but Alex McLeish told me afterwards he hates players going down too easily, and he's also had a go at one of his own guys as well. You know, it was little Kerkar who went down, and I know I've seen him in games, and, you know, he, he's, there's a tendency if, if, if you touch him, he's down. Uh, there's, there's plenty of players like that in the game. And, uh, you know, Gregory at times to, as well, I've told him, he's got to stop it. But although he was fouled on the occasions, but he's got to stop embellishing things. I don't like to see that from our players.